There they are, unwrapping the greatest gifts to the armchair fan, the NHK cameras. I imagine they shot this final bout of Division 4 as a test. It was rather good, so let me share it with you. Daikisho versus Oginosho. And that can be considered a heroic act of resistance, unless you're Daikisho cursing himself. Daikisho, as I suspect most of us, thinks he has it won, and just needs to bring his right foot here, then his left foot here, preferably nice and far apart. But what Oginosho, seven years older, does well, is not only pin the elbow, which is standard, but keep yanking the right armpit skywards to nullify the right arm. An all-out arm lock throw is too risky though, and his elbow pin is actually a hunt for a bigger prize, the left armpit, to which he grittily carves out his path. And when his foe struggles to come forward with the steps I mentioned, his momentum and slipping feet can be used against him for the final scoop. Genial. Let's change the order today. Yesterday, we dissected Terunofuji's win over Meisei with the aid of quotes from the man himself, who claimed that even though he won, he didn't want to fight with a double-clamp stance. Today, I think, we saw what he meant. The initial parallels with yesterday's bout were striking, as was the crucial difference at the end. Ornoshaw wins where Meisei didn't for two reasons. One, he's weightier with a lower centre of gravity, and two, well, take a look. Belt fighter Meisei's hands and arms are in so deep that all he can do once clinched is keep gripping, knowing the moment they're off, they're neutralised. Ornoshaw, though, only seeks his underrated inside left, because his right is there for pushing. Teru works out what's going on, and seeks to clamp Oginosho style here, on the triceps. But a possessed Ornosho says, all you're getting is my forearm, which is strong enough to break loose. Having studied yesterday's bout, Ornosho has prepared for the arm lock counter throw. He said so. And this is where he thanks his father for forcing him to do all those push-ups. He actually has the one-armed strength, aided by his right foot, to tip Teru onto one leg, removing his pivot. He then counters the left arm lock throw by tipping with his right, leaving Teru's other foot airborne, causing him to ditch the throw for a bear hug, which, bingo, exposes the left armpit, which is what Ornoshaw desired all along. Amazingly, that was Ornoshaw's first win in the ring this term, and Teru's first defeat. But his fourth loss in five to this highly awkward opponent. Okay, we've gone heavy on the technique so far, so let's now relax with a good old slugfest. Takagenji concussed Chudano Umi with one of his mighty blows in January, but would he regret using similar tactics on seasoned brawler Shaw Hozan, whose face shots often draw blood? The message, I think we can say, 
don't provoke a veteran with no elder stock, for he's a highly desperate man. Sticking with Division 2, you might remember from the video linked above that this match had much riding on it. Takakento and the Bushozan were promoted together for this tournament. They also joined Sumo together, and rivalled each other at their respective high schools, Johoku and Saitama Sakai. Bushozan had scrapped his way to three wins from four ahead of today. Takakento, as I showed you yesterday, was winless and 6-1 down in their head-to-head. -head. It's a good job those cameras were active, because it really was a photo finish. And as you can see, just in Takakendo's favour. It was good I kept my cool, and somehow I won. His summary began. I owe it simply to reactions at the end. You can't do sumo if you overthink, after all. He must still win 7 from 10 to keep rank, though. In Division 1, Tobizaru's repeat attempts to bore through clamp specialist Kotonowaka turned into yesterday's epic. Today, saw him test his stamina again, in this bout with Midori Fuji.
It was great to get that hard-earned win, Tobizaru heaved. I usually get my bouts over with quickly, but these past two days they've been really drawn out. But I'm not tired. I'm bouncing, because I got two wins. Again, we saw a technically rich duel, which we'll analyse post-tournament. In the big bouts today, Shodai was distraught with his slow tachi eye and lame attempt to push the arm, which ended in defeat to Wakataka Kage. He said, I have no injury worries, but there's not enough energy coming from me, and I want to improve that somehow. Wakataka Kage, meanwhile, was delighted to subdue another Ozeki with a fine low attack, saying, It was good I persevered from underneath, and I want to keep showing that kind of sumo in the days ahead. Hokuto Fuji's blood was spilt on successive days, and in successive bouts with Takakesho. Surely you all remember the Gore War of January. And yet, he got successive wins with this double hand parry and throat armpit assault. I wanted to avoid a blast out and hung in from down low, was Hokuto's verdict. A good Tachi Ai helped me too. Even good moves count for nothing if you lose, Takakesho sighed. But I will put the opening third out of my mind and approach tomorrow as if it's day one, as I always do. And finally, Asanoyama seemingly heeded Chairman Hakaku's call to work harder for his wins by finally imposing an inside right on his fifth foe, Meisei. At last I've won in my own style and let's hope it's a turning point, said the Ozeki who has four wins, just one fewer than soul leader Miyogiryu. Doesn't Fujiyazuma look lonely without his attendance? Feel free to give him and the rest of the guys some more of your company right here tomorrow. <laughs>